I do believe they're bought for him, yes, because that's they're representing him. That, you don't you don't you don't do that otherwise. You don't bring him in. So this is what I'm trying to this is what I'm trying to understand as you know, I, this isn't like I'm not trying to trap Graham Potter or Todd Bowley or whatever by asking these questions. There will be viewers watching this that don't actually understand the ongoings behind the scenes. What I see of just through a scroll through Twitter and ultimately seeing who you sign is what looks to me a very scattergun approach. But fair enough. They've got a guy in from Brighton who understands what Potter wants and they're building for that in his image. In which case, when I get to this squad here, which I just want to show you, this squad here looks completely and utterly imbalanced to me. I mean, you yes. lost you lost Jorginho. I don't know if that's exactly what he would have wanted. Is, know, this, is, this, is this the holding midfielder? Yeah. This ruins me. You've got to swap that. Zakar. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And, and Kante in here. Yeah. But you know what? I put Kante in there, right? Mm. Just to be like polite. No. Because I, I even think Zaka, I mean, Zaka you, you is can more almost make a case that there's nobody in this box. But, but that's I like, chat Kante you, into you the can, kind. Yeah. You can yeah. almost make a case to say there is nobody in that box. There is no Casemiro or Rodri or, uh, or forget Party it. Let's do it. Or Jorginho or anyone because Jorginho has been sold. Yeah. So Zakaria is kind of a player that I, you know, he's had a massive injury. Um, over the last couple of years at Mush and Gladbach. I'm not sure what his actual position is. Is he more of a box-to-box -box or is he more of a sitter? Sure. I personally think that he could go in that box and, yeah. and he is more of a sitter. I wouldn't trust him in the final third. I think if you're going to be a box-to-box -box midfielder, you actually need to be good in both boxes mm -hmm. by definition. Or you in, at least need to have the, the kind of capacity to contribute in the final third, which Kante shows at times with his dribbling and his mm -hmm. ball carrying and, mm -hmm. and his, you know, low sense of, um, of, of gravity. But, but, you're right, there's no balance here. So mm. whatever partnership at the moment you put with Enzo outside of Zakaria, in my opinion, is an imbalanced one. Mm -hmm. And is a, is a partnership that is very easy to play through. And we saw it in the midweek game against Dortmund um, with the, with the counter-attack Enzo versus <laughs> Ademi. And it was an absolute, you know, it was, it was awful. You know, yep. it was destroyed. It You've also got the issue with the three strikers. I mean, you spend 600 million, and okay, Broj is injured in fairness. Aubameyang doesn't seem to be favoured, but he has struggled really in English football for a good two, three years now. Uh, Felix could play as a false nine, but he's using him as a 10. Um, your, your biggest investment was Mudrik on the left wing, but Sterling came, okay, Sterling can play on the right, but we know he prefers on the left. It, it's the total imbalance, the word you use. So the conclusion I'm trying to come to at the end of this Chelsea section all eyes are on Potter mm. and everyone's blaming him. Eyes they're, need to be on the board as well. Well, they're saying, yeah. you know, they're saying, you know, Todd Bowley spent 600 million. He's been backed, blah, blah. But look at the squad that's been left. It, it's not a bad, there's very good players in there. Mm. There's some players I'd love to have at Arsenal. But there's also... We're actually missing some players. We have more than this. Well, who, <laughs> yes, that is true. <laughs> I didn't include the lone players. <laughs> no, not even the lone ones. I'm talking about... You, to be fair, like Lewis Hall and Carl yeah. Chukomenko, they are first you're team right. players now. Yeah, they Lewis are. Hall, Chukomenko, you're right. I miss. The point I'm trying to make is, this is the issue for me. It's actually the group that's been left behind. And so responsibility lies on who put this together. Mm. Now, if Todd Bowley said, here's 600 million, okay, not, how, many, how much did he get in well, January? 200, much, 250. If, yeah, I mean, right. in Cuckoo, Gusto are part of that 600 million. They don't join until the summer. Cool. Some of that 600 million is from the summer, just gone in yeah. Kulabali, Sterling, Cook, Cool. So, so let's whatever call it the figure is. 200 from, mil, whatever. Whatever right? it is, right. Let's say Todd Bowley went to Graham Potter and went, here's a big pot of cash. Mm. You can use a pound of it if you want. You can use 50 million. You can use let's say 300 million. million you say. can use whatever you want. Yeah. It's up to you. And then he delivered that then the responsibility is on Potter. Todd Bowley's done his job. He supported the manager that he's brought in and you can't question him. It's on Graham Potter to deliver. And that includes the scouting team and the people around him and everyone it's that comes group. together to, to go with Graham Potter and all the different heads to go, this is what I want to build. If it's Graham Potter, you just work on coaching. Ooh, football manager tells me Enzo's a good player. Mm. The Chelsea fans on Twitter want him, so here we go. We'll give you Enzo, whatever it's going to take, 100 million. Oh, you know what? Arteta wants Mudrik, so we'll come in for him. Oh, but I was in the middle of negotiation with Madweki, so you know what? We'll give you both. Then it's on the ownership. And I know, I know Potter should do more. I know it's Southampton at home. I know it's managerless, bottom of the league, Southampton at home. I get that. But sacking him 
for me, would just be the ownership neglecting their responsibility. They, if they're the ones that delivered this group to him. They, they can't sack him. They won't sack him. And for financial reasons and for their own, like you said, their own policies and what they've put in place and what they want at the football club in terms of long-term manager, um, in terms of, you know, overhauling the squad, in terms of actually you've bought into this man, literally, with you've put your money where your mouth is with that five-year contract, with that massive wage to make him, what, the fourth highest earning coach in the league, higher than Ten Hag, mm-hmm. below Conte, Klopp and Pep. You have no choice but to stick by him. Yeah. And like I said, they will and have to up until it gets to relegation talk. Because if it does get to that conversation, yep. then everything goes out the window. All logic, all context. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, at yeah. that point, you have, to, you have to just cut ties because then you're playing with your Premier League your Premier League position. And that is something that you cannot play with. That, that would be one of, if not the most embarrassing relegation from a football league in the history of the, the no, sport. no, it, it will be yes, it will be the most categorically the yeah. most embarrassing relegation I've ever seen. I in, in couldn't football agree history. more. I just think I, just I get think, what you're saying. You got to give him more time. You got to ride the wave. You got to ride the wave. You got to get to the summer. You've got to clear a lot of this. I do. If Ziyech is making a last minute move to PSG, he's got to to, so, to oh, keep oh, moving out on the door. But the yeah. thing is with with Graham Potter, which is another thing that people will come into, is that he's got to make a decision. Is he going to play the young players and the players that are 100% going to be here next season? Or is he going to try and get results? And if you're going for results, you play a Bamiyang or you at least have him on the bench. If he's not your tailor-made striker for your system, for your setup, for your identity, you have him on the bench to get you a goal against Southampton so you don't lose that game. You have a get-out-of-jail pass. Mm. If you're not going to do that and it's not based on results, then you've got to play the young players. Yeah, and we've seen, Ziyech, Fafana, right. we've seen Ziyech start. Yeah. 24 hours after, 48 hours after almost going to PSG. So it, you have to pick You have to pick one or, or That or tells you other. everything. Yeah. And that's why I asked this question. I think when it, to bring it all around, it goes back to what I said earlier, which is we know very little actually about, or at least I knew going into this and, and you've enlightened me a bit about the runnings at Chelsea. Who runs who, who makes what decisions. I'm still a little concerned about some of that. But what I see here is the amount of money spent and no trust in number nine. I then see Ziyech, who you're right, was on the brink of going to PSG starting games. I see no depth or actual dependable number six in the absence of Jorginho. And then I see, you know, it's not a problem. You've got yeah, great depth, Mudrik and Sterling, but arguably two players that have come for a lot of money can both be looked at as the main guy would be wanting to be playing in the same position roughly. I think so, their plan for the follow, because we, we continuously keep getting linked to strikers and Manchester City fans kept saying that Sterling performs best with a striker. The, the, the idea would be that he would move over to the right. Ziyech would fine. not be here and you would have an Ivan Tony or whoever they plan on getting yeah. in, in the striker role because we've seen Sterling can produce a lot from the right hand side. But in the short term, when we're trying to get results, what is going to be the plan and how are Chelsea going to play? Because like I said to you, against Southampton, from back to front, it was a mess. No press, yeah. no control in the midfield, no recycling of the ball to try and get through periods of the game and try and keep possession. Bide your time. And defensively, we conceded and we should have conceded more if it wasn't for Kepo. Big thanks for watching this clip. Really hope you've enjoyed it. If you want to check out the full episode, the link is in the description. Click it now.